Thank you, Arian, for that beautiful story and for reminding us to pay attention to the spirits that are in our midst, paying attention to the lessons that live on within us. As Arian mentioned, all around the world, different cultures and different people celebrate the closeness of the ancestors at this time of year. North, south, east, and west, all around the world, people recognize this time of year as something special, something special when the ancestors are close by, when the lessons that we hear from the ancestors are close at hand. To some people, this is a joyful thing. People feel joy in feeling that closeness again to folks who have long been lost. People feel joy in knowing that their ancestors are still with them. For some people, this is a joyful time. For some people, this is a scary time. For some of us, we have been taught that the closeness of ancestors, spirits from beyond is a scary thing and we are put out of sorts by that presence. We are taught that that mist that we feel is not spiritual and telling, but, but frightening instead. For some people, this is a profoundly sad time. We are reminded of people we sorely miss. And for some people, that sadness comes because the ancestors in our lives have not always been ones that we want to still be close to. We recognize that. And so today, I invite you to understand that your ancestors are those people who have gone before you, whose lives helped make you who you were, who contribute in positive ways to your sense of who you are and what you are called to be in this world. They're not necessarily the people that you were ever related to, but people who taught you something, people who cared for you in some way, people who, um, who, whose presence is meaningful to you at this time of year. I too have some stories, but mine are of ancestors. I've been thinking about which of my ancestors are close by me this time of year. And I think about my grandfather, especially my grandfather passed away last year. At the beginning of the pandemic, I had just a brief chance to say goodbye to him before the lockdown happened. We didn't even have a funeral service for him because we were all in isolation by the time he died. My grandfather is close with me at this time of year right now. I feel his courage, his understanding of selflessness, uh, his understanding of what we are called to do for other people who are more vulnerable than we are. My grandfather famously fought in the French underground in World War II. He grew up in Marseille, France. And when Marseille was occupied by Nazi Germany in the, the era of World War II, he um, ran away from home and joined the French underground just as a teenager at that point in his life. And he did it because he understood that this government that had taken over his country was putting people at risk. They were doing evil things in this world. And he would do what he needed to do, what he could do to stand up to that evil. It was much, much later in his life that he even told any of us stories of that time. They were difficult stories for him to tell. They were traumatic stories for him to tell. But he is close by to me at this time of year. And I feel his presence and I feel him whispering to me that I am, I am called to serve people who are more vulnerable than I am, who are being put at risk by power. 
another ancestor that is close to me these days is Joe Ray Wright. I don't talk about Joe Ray a lot. Joe Ray was my doctoral advisor in my first graduate degree when I was a scientist. Joe Ray's lab welcomed me and I did my PhD in cell biology studying with Joe Ray Wright. Joe Ray was a lung biologist. She studied the lining of the lung and the different ways that um, it interacted with things, but that's neither here nor there because what I learned from Joe Ray, the lessons that live on in me are about how you put together a team of people. You see, Joe Ray was particular about how she ran her lab. Everyone's viewpoint, everyone's viewpoint in that lab was welcomed, was encouraged, was invited on a regular basis. Joe Ray taught me how bringing together people who think about things differently, who process the world through different neurobiologies, who understand things in different ways, who make connections in different ways, how bringing those people together makes everyone's work better in a science lab. She depended on all of us bringing exactly who we were to bear, all of who we were, all of our identity, all of our history, all of our thoughts, all of our experience. She depended on us bringing that to bear on the science that we did. And we did good science. I, um, <laughs> I will let you know, Joe, Joe Ray was, um, was well respected in her field for the quality of science that came out of her lab. But the quality of science that came out of her lab was only possible because of how she put together her team, how she encouraged us, how she made room for diverse voices at the table in her lab, and how she cared about us, how she nurtured us, how she witnessed what was going on in our lives and gently guided us down paths that were more appropriate for us and our calling and our expertise and our way of being in the world. She taught me a lot about how to be a mentor, about how to be a team member, and about how to be a minister. When I applied to seminary a couple years after finishing my doctorate in her lab, her response to me when I asked her for a letter of recommendation was, well, it's about time you figured that out. We knew that that's where you were going all along. She's close to me at this point. I was never related to her, but she is an ancestor that is close to me, who speaks to me through the thin veil about how I am called to be in this world. What are the ancestors telling you, beloved? What are the lessons that they taught you that are living on in you? What are the lessons that you are just coming to understand apply to you in new and different ways? We want to know. Tell us about them, please. Amen.